Should you add plants to your grow? What is this? What are the benefits? These are the questions I will be answering in today's video. What is up everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today and I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. So today I am finally making the video on the live casing layers. Now if you guys have been watching my channel or you know reading my community posts etc, the pictures that I post up on YouTube and things, you will have noticed that over the last couple of months there are actually plants in my tubs. Right, and I have gotten so many questions of you from you guys asking what this is all about, which is completely understandable because it is weird and you don't hear anything about this, right? So I thought I would uh, bring it to you guys' attention. Now, I've been wanting to make a video about this for a while, but the thing is I wanted to do like at least the bare minimum amount of experiments before I feel comfortable talking to you guys about this and sharing my findings and giving you guys a challenge here, as you guys will see in this video. So this is quite a large topic. So I actually wrote up quite a script um, or at least basic points that I'd like to discuss. So if I'm referring back to this piece of paper, that's why. So what is a live casing? So a live casing is basically a casing layer. It doesn't have to be casing layer. It could just be your core, right? Or just a top layer, like a core top layer. In my case, I am using Jiffy Mix, as you guys know. Uh, for those who want to know more about casing layers and what I like to use and how I like to make it, check out my video uh, on casing layers, which will be in the description. But a live casing is basically, as the name suggests, it's alive. And what is it alive with? Well, with plants, right? So we got live plants here. And so that's essentially what a live casing is. Very simple, right? And before I get any deeper into this, I would like to bring out a call to arms to the community to experiment with live casing. Now, the problem is there is literally no forum thread or centralized space dedicated to discussion on this emerging practice. So to help add to the knowledge base of this technique, I have opened a new live casing channel on the Mycophiles Discord server where you can share all of your findings and experimentation with live casing layers to the community. Of course, it is completely free. The link is in the description. So why should we use a live casing layer? Well, so I split this into two categories. The first is the scientific ideas behind the live casing layer. And the second is the philosophy, or at least my philosophy on it. So first we'll start with the sort of scientific uh, hypothetical ideas behind the potential benefits of using a live casing layer. Uh, so basically what it comes down to is you know, people have said that, oh, it prevents contamination, but they don't know why. Or, you know, people are just basically experimenting with it for that reason. And I'll talk about that more on later, but I will talk about more concrete sort of foundations on why I started experimenting with it. So the first thing that I was mainly curious about was its use as a sort of substrate additive that is a very low maintenance and doesn't require pasteurization or anything, but can add nitrogen to the soil to the substrate because mushrooms like nitrogen just as plants do. So that was my main interest. Can I actually, for example, make a grow of poo lovers on just core and live casing? Because the plants, the idea behind it is the plants would create enough nitrogen and the, the poo lovers will be able to do fairly well, you know, with just core and just some seeds. So that was my one of my main ideas on it. Uh, so because I went in from a nitrogen perspective, nitrogen increasing perspective, I decided to use white clover because A, they require very little nutrition to grow. They, they're very hardy, basically weeds. And two, they are one of the plants that can transform nitrogen into a usable form for plants and fungi to use. So it will change the nitrogen from the atmosphere of which about 80% of our atmosphere is nitrogen, but it's not really usable by plants in that form. It has to change to nitrites, nitrates, or ammonium. And white clover is one of the best nitrogen fixers out there. And it's not only white clover, just generally the plants in the legumes family. So like peas are known to be the best out of overall, like nitrogen fixers, but white clover are a lot more neglectable. So that's why I chose white clover. And so farmers often use plants like white clover to increase the nitrogen amount in their field, right? To increase their crop yield and to re-fertilize the soil in a natural way. So because of this, they're, they're sort of colloquially known as green manure in the farming community because it's green and it does similar things to manure, which is fertilize the soil. So that's sort of the idea that I had behind it. Now, of course, after further experimentation and research, they can create nitrogen when they're alive, but it's not a given because first the plant has to be fairly mature because basically there's like on the roots, uh, certain bacteria sort of um, make 
make the, the roots of the plants their home. And then the, the bacteria are the ones that are actually creating the nitrogen. And for that, it takes time and it's not a given. You have to have the plants become bigger. And also usually most of them, like they can produce nitrogen while the plants are alive, but a lot of the benefits come after the plants are dead and, and then all the nitrogen that the plants have gathered releases back into the soil. So you have to have like this death cycle on there as well. And with live casings, at least so far, we don't do that, but I do, okay? And so this is uh, sort of my little contribution to you guys all is that, well, you guys will see, you guys will see later on. <laughs> now, having said that, mushrooms are closely related to plants, but the types that we grow are not mycorrhizal, meaning that, for example, Amanita muscaria, right, is symbiotic to certain trees like birch trees. And what they do is the Amanita mycelium will colonize the roots of the tree and give it nutrients, right, from the soil. So it'll give it nitrogen and other, you know, important compounds and water as well. And in return, the tree will give the mycelium carbohydrates that it created through photosynthesis. But the types that we grow are saprotrophs, meaning that they basically gain their energy and nutrition from decomposing material. So it's not like there's no technically overt symbiotic relationship with plants, but mushrooms, are, again, are closely related to plants. So regardless of whether they're saprotrophs or they're symbiotic or not, uh, essentially what our fungi is growing on is manure, right? Most of the time, or maybe wood chips if you're growing wood lovers. So ultimately they're still growing on plants, just decomposed plants. So they, they are very closely related. And even though I can't pinpoint exactly what you know, or how it's exactly beneficial, I feel like sort of instinctually there might be something to it. That's basically sort of the main ideas behind using a live casing. Now, uh, some people say that it, you know, helps prevent contamination and stuff, and I haven't seen it yet. Again, I'll talk about that later on when I get to the pros and cons of it from my experience. And now I'll talk a little bit about my philosophy on it is that it's good to be natural. Um, I feel like it's good to recreate nature. And again, I'll talk more about that later. So now I'd like to talk about my experience so far in general and talk to you guys about the pros and cons of using a live casing layer. So let's talk about the pro pros. The first thing is it does maintain a better microclimate. That That is for sure, right? So what that means is it will keep more humidity there. It'll keep better surface conditions for longer. Uh, so if you have issues with, for example, drying out tubs and stuff, it can it may be beneficial to add some plants on top of your casing layer. The other benefit that I found is it compacts the casing layer whilst maintaining airiness, which increases structural integrity and aeration within the casing layer. Another potential benefit that I've heard a lot of people speculate upon is it may help offset CO2 and increase oxygen in a grow. But in my experience, it is actually detrimental if your grow is already tuned in properly. Uh, as they do not require it. And if they were to hypothetically require it, the amount of plants you would need to have in there would cause far too much of a microclimate and cause the plants to rot and the fungi to paradoxically start asphyxiating. And I have direct experience with this. So it's actually, it's not worth it at all. Um, in idea, it works, but in reality, the, the types of micro, you know, scale grows that we're doing here, it's actually detrimental in my experience. Uh, so again, so claimed by some to lower contamination, I personally have not noticed a difference, but that is not to say that I am discrediting that either. All I'm saying is that I need to do more experimentation with this to see exactly what, because a lot of factors can cause contams. For example, I have one culture of, uh, well, not culture, one species, Anoki bisporus, that because they take so long to grow, they end up contaminating before the first flush usually. And I've been trying to fix that up uh, for months now. And even with the addition of a live casing layer, it didn't really help. Although they were alive for a long time, so it might've actually helped, but it didn't really help with fruiting. But again, more experimentation is needed. So let's talk about the cons now. The cons is it can cause too much of a microclimate, which is what I talked about a little bit earlier. So it can cause fruits to not get enough oxygen. And it does cause, in my experience, plants to develop mold and decay if there are too many plants. So basically you need to find the right balance of moisture and plants in a grow. So nowadays I've reduced the amount of plants that I use completely. So when I first started experimenting with this, the first one I did like just moderate and that worked out beautifully, right? But the rest of them, I just went overboard and I just said, okay, how much can I get away with? How many plants can I put in there? So I j it was just like a lawn, right? So that's when, <laughs> when the rotting and stuff uh, happened, as you guys can probably see on the screen now. So another con is that it makes some species more annoying to harvest. 
and particularly I'm talking about pool lovers. Although this applies to all of it, but pool lovers especially because with pool lovers, a lot of people say that it's really hard to harvest because you get lots of lots of fruits, right? And you gotta pick every single one and they grow on poo as the name suggests. So then you gotta pick off the poo and it's just a lot of time. Now I have, I have shown the community a very simple way to do it in my nightclub video, also in the description uh, of how to easily harvest them. I call it the crunch tech. I just put my hand over it and then it'll just crunch, crunch, crunch. You just pick it up and well, lo and behold, there's no poo on there. Super easy, done. Five minutes, full canopy, easy harvest. But with a live casing layer, I can't because the roots and the mycelium become so entangled. And uh, basically it's, you know, really hard to harvest because like you pull it up, right? Hey, it doesn't crunch. It doesn't crunch at all, which goes back to my point about making the casing layer more compact. Um, if you put too many plants in there, it's just too much, too compact. And when you, when you take it out, okay, you just end up taking out a bunch of the casing layer with the poo and the plants. So it's, it's not fun at all. So in the end, what I ultimately did was I just dumped it instead of harvesting it because it was just too much effort. Now, the next thing is that too many plants can lower your yield and increase your side and bottom pins. This is a big one. If you get too many plants in here, basically like the mushrooms will be like, okay, this is just too much effort fruiting here. Let's fruit on the side and the bottom. And I haven't had side and bottom pins like that since I was a beginner. Cause usually I don't get any side or bottom pins with a regular casing layer, like maybe one side, little side pin, that's it. No liner or anything. I got videos on that as well, check it out. But yeah, it does actually really make a difference. So now let's get to the practical points. Okay, so how can you go and apply live casing layer? How many seeds do you apply? Do the seeds contaminate? That kind of thing. So how should you make your live casing layer? Well, first of all, if you're gonna be doing like a Jiffy Mix based or peat moss um, vermiculite based casing layer like I am, you would make your casing layer like normal, right? Get it at the field capacity, pasteurize it, take it out. And what I like to do is I like to take a bowl and then I like to put some casing in there, you know, mix it up, make sure I get all the clumps out of there. And then I like to apply my Jiffy Mix casing layer. Now with the live casing layer, I tried two different methods. The first one is to put some seeds in here, right? And then like, like put, I mean, sorry, put the, um, put the Jiffy Mix in there and then put the seeds, mix it up, pre-mix it basically, and then sprinkle it on. And another method where I would just do it normally, just no seeds, just apply it here and then sprinkle the seeds on top. The latter method is by far way better because what happens with the first method is that you get seeds like inside the casing layer, like, you know, deep inside. And so what it does is as the seeds germinate, then it lifts up the dirt. So what I ended up happening was that I had like these mesas of like big patches of casing layer just up in the air base. So thus useless, right? It just negates the whole point of the casing layer uh, because it will just lift all that dirt up. Whereas if you just sprinkle it on, the seeds will germinate just fine like this. Right, and, and as you can see, no dirt in the air. So that's what I would recommend. So the next thing is how many seeds should you apply? So again, I, I was talking about planting too many seeds. So that's not good at all for various reasons that I've already discussed. So just look at the amount that I'm putting on the video. That's a good amount. You see this right here? This is also a good amount, right? This is a good amount. You could even go less than this. Now, the next point is, do the seeds cause contamination? No, the seeds do not cause contamination. I have never had uh, live casing in general causing contaminants. And some pe and somebody asked me, hey, you know, how are you not getting trike? Because, you know, plants and trike go hand in hand. To be honest, I don't know enough about plants to tell you exactly why. But what I do understand is that trike has to first colonize the roots of the plants. Maybe it takes time for that or you have, and I know some people will artificially introduce uh, trike to the plants. I haven't artificially introduced trike at all. Um, and these plants are also fairly young, but basically no issues with trike as a result of the live casing layer. So now I would like to talk about points for further experimentation. So this is something that I like to call the life death cycle of live casing. So, so far live casing has referred only to the inclusion of live plants within a grow, but could there be any benefit to letting the plants live and die in the tub and see if the nutrients they release can be beneficial to the mycelium? Now I have experimented with having the plants essentially decompose and disintegrate through mold and bacteria in my overplanted tubs, yet it still did not cause any contamination in the substrate itself. In some species, particularly coral lovers, the mycelium colonized over the plant remains like it's a new casing layer. Could this be beneficial for certain species? Is this is still a very underground practice within an already underground hobby? More experimentation and research is needed. And that's why 
I have created that Discord channel for you guys to do your own experiment and add to the knowledge base. So another experiment I would like to try is to see if plants can be sprouted and then harvested and then laid out on the substrate prior to the first flush so that its nutrients can be released into the mycelium, therefore acting as a sort of substrate additive, the same way farmers often make use of nitrogen-fixing cover crops like white clover, as you see here. So this, in effect, would circumvent the need to rot the plants while they are alive, which takes time and is messy. But then again, in an indoor grow, most will only go for a flush to three flushes before dumping the substrate as most of the grain's energy is spent. You know, so is it worth it? It technically does not make sense if we view it through the perspective of prioritizing only yield and efficiency in a grow, but I feel this is an important direction to continue exploring. In fact, I would go as far as to say that this is the general direction home mycology will be going, which is more holistic grows that do not prioritize yield and efficiency at all costs, but grows that increasingly try to recreate nature. The idea is to let nature do more of the work and this is a stance I have always been a proponent of, which is reflected in my philosophy that you just need to provide the conditions for the mushrooms to grow themselves, rather than you actively causing to grow. So the use of a live casing layer alone is not completely at that point where we could say it's self-sustaining like the natural world, but it is indicative of this movement towards more holistic or natural methods of growing, which intersects with the movement to make cultivation simpler and more accessible to the masses. For example, Anybody could pick up a spore syringe or a liquid culture and inject their flower pots and see what happens. By the way, if you're gonna be trying this method, be sure to keep your soil moist. I like to call methods like this background cultivation as it requires minimal effort on one's part while leaving most of the work to nature. I am of the belief that such methods are the next step in simplifying mycology. And strangely enough, the more advanced we as a species get, the closer we seem to try to recreate nature. There is beauty in simplicity. And guys, that is the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a bit of a long one, uh, but I wanted to cover as many points as possible. So if you guys want some cool genetics, you want to support me on Patreon, loads of live casing fruiting videos on Patreon for free right now already. Affiliates in the description. You want mentorship or again, genetics from yours truly, hit me up in my email, michaelphilia.official at gmail.com. Unless this is way off in the future when I already have a website. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Be sure to hit that like, comment, and subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video. And thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the live casing channel on the Discord server. Much love, guys. Michael File Sage, checking out for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.